Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to do another example of how to balance oxidation reduction reactions, also known as redox reactions. And in the previous video, you've seen that they're not so easy to do. So in order to get through them correctly, we have to follow a very steady particular procedure. And just to help us along, I have written it there on the board on the right side. So first, we write down the basic equation, and here it is. Notice that this equation is not yet balanced. The next thing we're doing is assigning the oxidation numbers to all the atoms in the equation. After that, we need to determine which of the oxidation numbers are changing for which elements or for which atoms. At that point, we want to equalize the oxidation numbers first. So that means we probably have to multiply one by a number and the other one by another number to have that product be equal to each other, one being an oxidation number increase, the other one being an oxidation number decrease. At that point, we want to balance all the other non-oxygen and hydrogen atoms, and then we balance the whole equation with adding uh, water, the hydroxide ion, and the hydrogen ion. And at the end, of course, we want to check to make sure we didn't make any mistakes. All right, so that's a plateful. That's a lot of work to do. But if you do it very systematically, you can see that it's not that bad. All right, first thing, we're going to assign oxidation numbers to all these. Oxygen usually is easy. That's going to be minus 2. And potassium always going to be plus 1. So now we have minus 8 plus 1, that gives us a plus 7 for that to be balanced. So manganese starts out at a plus 7. Uh, chlorine minus 1, hydrogen plus 1. Uh, chlorine is going to be uh, minus 1 times 2, that means this is a plus 2. You can see then the manganese from a plus 7 to a plus 2. Chlorine gas here is going to be 0, and potassium plus 1, chlorine minus 1. So we've assigned all the oxidation numbers. So it's pretty easy. Some of the high electronegative atoms, such as oxygen and chlorine, they're going to be fairly simple because they usually have a, a single oxidation state, most of the time anyway. Then for something like potassium, you know that that has one extra electron in its uh, valence band, so it's easy to give that one electron away. Hydrogen is kind of in the same boat, especially when it's paired up with oxygen or chlorine. So then it's not that difficult then at that point to decide that manganese here has to be plus 7 and manganese there has to be plus 2. All right, next step, we're going to assign, or well, we assign the oxidation numbers. Next step is we're going to determine the changes. So here we see that manganese goes from plus 7 to plus 2. So manganese goes from plus 7 to plus 2. That means a reduction of 5. So that means that the delta equals minus 5 in the oxidation number. Now we see that chlorine also changes. On the left side, chlorine is minus 1. It is still minus 1 there and there, but it's 0 over there. So chlorine does go through an oxidation change. So chlorine starts at minus 1, goes all to 0. That's a change equal to a plus 1. So now the next thing is we want to find the number that will equalize those two changes. And the first reaction would be to say, okay, if I multiply this one by plus 5 and this one by plus 1, uh, then I have a minus 5 or plus 5. They, they balance each other out. But not so fast because if you look over here, we have chlorine gas, which is a diatomic molecule, which means you need two chlorines to make a diatomic chlorine uh, gas molecule. So for that reason, we actually have to multiply this by... Uh, 2 and this by 5, otherwise we can make up the chlorine uh, diatomic molecule. So we're going to multiply this times 2 and this times um, oh, and this times 10 instead of 5. And so this gives us minus 10 and this gives us a plus 10. Of course at that point they're balanced out. All right, so in order to balance the equation now we use the number 10 over here. So if we plug a 10 in here, we have uh, we account for the change, so that means we go from a minus 1 to a 0. We do that 10 times, so we change the oxidation number of minus 1 to 0 10 times. That gives us a oxidation uh, increase, so therefore we have what we call a, well, we call it oxidation. All right, at the same time, we have a manganese starting at plus 7, and it goes down to minus 2. And, of course, that is only a difference of 5, but we have to multiply times 2. That means we need to plug a 2 in there, and we need to plug a 2 in there. And I think now we're set as far as equalizing out the, um, the oxidation numbers. Of course, if I have a 10, uh, 10 chlorines here, I need a 5 over there. All right, so 5 times 2 is 10. There's 10, so to balance out the chlorines, we have manganese here times 2, manganese here times 2. So I think we're set. 
So the difference then would be 2 times 7 is 14, 2 times 2 is 4, the difference between, seven, uh, the difference between 14 and 4 is 10, and so from a reduction, oxidation reduction perspective, the equation now is balanced. All right, but they're not balanced yet for the rest of the atoms. So now the next step to do is after we equalize the oxidation number, we now have to balance the non-oxygen and hydrogen atoms. So let's take a look. And let me use a different color. Um, we have two potassiums here, and we have only one potassium here. That means we need to plug in the two to have potassium balanced. So now we can say potassium is balanced. Okay, so then we have manganese. We have two manganese over here and two manganese over there. So now manganese is balanced as well. And now we, let's see, we have oxygen. We'll forget about oxygen. Chlorine, all right. So chlorine, we have 10 chlorines here. We have four of them here. We have 10 of them here and two more over there. So that's 10 plus 4 plus 2. That's 16 mm, to have the... Uh, Chlorine balance on both sides of the equation, I need to go ahead and plug that in as a 16 as well. And so now chlorine is balanced as well. Now for a moment you say, well, wait a minute. Then we need a 10 here to balance the, the, uh, uh, the um, oxidation numbers. And the answer is yes, but we're not messing up the oxidation number balancing by plugging a 2 there, making this a 16, because notice that the chlorine here did not change its oxidation number, and the chlorine there did not change the oxidation number. The only ones that we have to worry about that change the oxidation number is this one right here from there to there and there are only 10 chlorine atoms that we have to account for that. So therefore we're still good as far as the balancing of the oxidation numbers. Now that we know that we also have uh, potassium, manganese and chlorine balanced as well. Now the next thing to do is to go ahead and balance the rest of the equation by adding uh, water, the hydroxide ion and the hydrogen ion on either side of the equation to make that balance out. Okay, let's see here. Let's start with oxygen. We have eight oxygen on the left side, and it looks like we don't have any oxygen on the right side. That means we need to add eight oxygen on the right side. We can do that by adding eight water molecules. So plus eight H2O. We can now see that the water molecules are balanced. We have eight, um, not the water molecules, but oxygen atoms. Two times four is eight. Eight times one is eight. So now we have oxygen, which is balanced as well. And we have one more to go, which is hydrogen. Let's see on the left side, we have 16 hydrogens. How many do we have on the right side? And it looks like 8 times 2, 16. So it looks like hydrogen is balanced as well. So now we balance the oxidation numbers. We balance the whole equation. We balance all the, the elements on the equation. And we balance it out by adding eight water molecules on the right side of the equation. We're all good. Now, just to make sure that we didn't upset anything by adding uh, some more numbers by changing the 10 to the 16, by adding water molecules. Now on the fifth, fifth try, we're going to simply check to see if everything is still balanced. We do that by adding up all the oxidation numbers on the left side and all the oxidation numbers on the right side and see what we get. So we have potassium, we have two of them, each of them is plus one, so that means plus two for the potassium. Manganese, two times plus 14 is, uh, plus seven is plus 14. Uh, two times four is eight, times a minus two is minus 16. Here we have 16 times a plus one, that's plus 16. Here we have 16 times a minus one, that's minus 16. And that's it, that's everything on the left side of the equation. Now when we add these up, notice we have a plus 16 and a minus 16, that cancels out. Two plus 14 is 16, minus 16, that cancels out as well. We have a zero total oxidation number on the left side of the equation. Now we add up all the oxidation numbers on the right side of the equation. All right, two times two is four. Two times two is four times a minus one is minus four. Five times zero. I'll just write plus zero so we know we've kept track of it. Okay, two times one is plus two, and two times the minus one is minus two. And here we have hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen is minus two, hydrogen is plus one, but there's two hydrogens in each, each water molecule, so that's two times eight is 16, times one is plus 16, and of course for the oxygen it's minus 16. Looks like we're balanced on the right side as well. The fours cancel out, the twos cancel out, the sixteens cancel out, and so we have zero becomes zero, and oxidation number wise, this equation is fully balanced, 
and everything else, all the elements are balanced. So that's the right way to balancing that oxidation re reduction reaction equation. And that's how you do that. So, quick review. First you have the basic equation, then you assign the oxidation numbers. Start with oxygen and chlorine because they're very electronegative. Hydrogen is typically plus one, something like potassium is typically plus one. Then you can easily figure out what the manganese oxidation numbers are. Then you determine which atoms are changing oxidation. Remember, manganese was going from seven to plus two. Chlorine goes from minus one, in this case, to zero. So those are the changes. You determine the amount of the change, minus five, so because of a reduction of minus five, and an increased oxidation of plus one. To balance them out, normally you would say, I'll multiply this times one and this times five, but since we go from chlorine, a single atom chlorine in this molecule right here, to a diatomic molecule with chlorine, we want to go ahead and increase that or double that, so we're going to write two times minus five and 10 times one to balance them out. And then you can see when you plug a 10 in there, you plug a five in there, the chlorines are balanced in the oxidation number. At that point, you go ahead and balance out the rest of the equation, by making sure that all the elements in the equation are balanced. Then you also balance it using oxygen and hydrogen. And then at the end, you check to make sure that all the oxidation numbers on the left side equal all the oxidation numbers on the right side. And that's how you balance an equation like that.